Hi, in this video, we're going to be talking about the three different types of Microsoft Teams. So recently, due to current events, a lot of our customers are working from home and they're looking for a platform for instant messaging and document collaboration. Microsoft Teams provides both of these, and we've been recently providing a lot of remote training to our customers to show them how to set these up. But as they go away and start setting things up themselves, similar questions seem to come up. Um, a lot of these are related to what type of teams they can set up, what's the best way to sort of construct them. Um, so I thought I'd create this quick video just to explain the three different types of teams. So to actually get to this point where we can create these teams, uh, at the bottom of, of your Teams app, you should see there's a join or create team. When we click on that, we see the ability here to create a team. And then we've got two options, build a team from scratch or create from an existing Office 365 group. 99.9% .9 of our customers are, are, are new to uh, sort of Microsoft Teams. So they'll be clicking on the build from scratch. And then this presents us with three options then, three different types. And it's going to say what kind of team we will be creating. So the first is a private team. Now this is pretty much what most people end up using. It's the most common template. Um, private really means that, um, that by default, nobody has access to this team other than the owner. Now the owner might be the sort of the manager or the head of department, or it could be uh, someone from the IT department or the IT supplier. So what it then means is this is restricted. So people uh, must be invited into this particular team. Um, so this can either be done by the owner, the IT support provider or so forth. The next type is public. Now public, uh, just to sort of be clear, doesn't mean public as in the general public, like anyone in the world can automatically access and find your team. What public means is that it's, uh, although by default, anyone in your organization does not have automatic access to it, they can add themselves into it if they wanted to. So this is perfect for things like projects where you're expecting different employees to come and go from the team, um, or maybe for um, organizing like a, a charity event or something where you're wanting people to sort of be able to uh, drop in and out to sort of provide additional support as and when they can do. Um, or um, what's more importantly that people are using it for at the moment is for kind of ad hoc social kind of uh, communication. So whether it's around a particular TV program or, or sports or whatever it is, it's a kind of um, social kind of platform. So um, what's very important at this point in time, because as people are kind of self-isolating and they're sort of working from home, um, then the, the sort of sense of being isolated and uh, separated from the rest of the um, their usual team that they see, um, can, can be quite detrimental to their uh, mental health. So having a area where they can talk um, freely with, and socialize provides that kind of platform uh, that they would usually get by going into the office. And the third type of team is an org wide team. Now an org wide team means by default, it will automatically add everybody in to this particular team from your organization. Um, based on that, they've got an Office 365 license, which gives them access to teams. But with this is great. So this replaces the need for having sort of distribution lists with everyone in and sending out emails or newsletters and things like that. It provides a nice kind of platform to do that. But for especially for large organizations, um, it's not always best to sort of have um, everyone being able to sort of contribute into that. Um, for small kind of organizations, then that's fine. Um, um, but again, small to medium sized organizations, you don't expect us to have one kind of org wide uh, sort of team and it'd be named after the name of the, the company. Um, but even then, you might still want to lock down the ability uh, to stop anyone other than kind of the admins or the owners of the team from posting in there. Because um, otherwise, if you allow everyone to do it, it could very quickly become quite chaotic uh, and there's way too much kind of information going on in there. So to do that, all we need to do is select the uh, the channel. Now this, imagine this team was our org wide team. We select the channel and by clicking the three dots and then we click on manage channel. And then we've got some options here, uh, which by default, it'll be set to anyone can post messages, um, but we will select this to only owners can post messages. And this means now only the owners of the team can post messages uh, and it stops that kind of chaotic, everybody sort of piling in and, and, uh, and posting their own kind of updates. So, hopefully that's been quite useful, gives you some useful information. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me.